Three years ago, I wanted to do a little experiment. I wanted to see if an old game like Super Mario Bros. 3 could have something worthwhile to show people if you removed layers and removed barriers. And that experiment was an overwhelming success, showing things that even data miners never found, like for example, a room that's made up of reused assets that was left behind by the developers. And then I did the same thing with the original Super Mario Brothers. But then when it came down to Super Mario World, I was told it was a waste of time. That data's already shown that there's nothing really to see when you remove the invisible walls, I guess. But then it dawned on me that three years ago, I was told something very similar with Super Mario Brothers 3. And I thought to myself, how silly would it be if I listened to those people back then? And then realized, why am I listening to them now? And so here we are. We might not find much, but we're gonna find as much as we can and hopefully you enjoy the episode. Here is everything I could find out of bounds in Super Mario World. Now, there is a little Easter egg in Super Mario World. If you wait a couple seconds with the regular boos, they do a little silly face with their tongue. But a little tidbit that's a lot more obscure is that if you wait a really long time with the big boo, you may try to peek every 17 seconds or so and try to see if Mario is there. Now, this game does use layers, but unfortunately, if a sprite is on a sprite, removing the sprite layer is only gonna remove all the sprites. But thanks to Lux over smwcentral.net, he was able to remove the hands off of the big boo. And so now you can see his eyes without any obstruction whatsoever. So you can remove layers in Super Mario World and of course when you do that you start to see things that the developers use to mask other things. So you just saw me cross this bridge here with the Cheap Cheap and if we remove some of the key layers here you can see that there's a blue square here that the Cheap Cheap goes into. And you know that's a little disappointing. It's all on the same layer as the Cheap Cheap. So much like the Big Boo we had to go inside the ROM itself to remove the blue square just to see what happens to the Cheap Cheap that the developers mask. And if we slow down the footage here you can see that the Cheap Cheap starts off looking one direction and ends with the image flipped as well as the palette of the cheap cheap changing for only a few frames and that's not the only thing hidden by layers the Lakitu for example always has a body underneath the clouds but unfortunately since once again it's all on a sprite layer it had to be modified outside of the game but we pulled it off for you here you go this is what a Lakitu looks like without his cloud which isn't too different from when you smack on its head and it falls through it but there's also a Lakitu that goes through a pipe and if you paid close attention to how the Lakitu looked like without the cloud you can see that the person that did the art on this one didn't care as much about making sure that the arms connected really well with the body. Again, slowing down the footage when you see him throw a spiny, you can see that it almost looks as though his arms and his head are placed over the original body instead of being organically connected to it. In fact, you can still see the upper limbs of the original Lakitu underneath the new limbs, which made me curious about the fish and boo. And uh, unfortunately, there isn't anything to see underneath that cloud. You'll see that his neck pretty much just stops about where you'd think it would, which makes sense because you can't step on a fishing boo's head and take the cloud cloud from them. Now let's talk about maps. The first thing that I noticed is that there's this border here that can be removed as a layer and it'll show a little bit more of the map. And I was really intrigued by this. I saw a landmass over on the left near the green switch. Now don't get too excited. I very quickly realized what was going on here. The borders of Super Mario World are actually hiding the opposite portion of the map. For example, that landmass you just saw on the left there is actually the far right side of the same map. The image just repeats itself. And then when I started to figure that out, I started to think, wait a second, the sub maps do something very similar. Well, at least they have to, because when I remove the border there, I can see other sub maps from whatever sub map I'm on. So we activated the map scrolling for the sub maps and as a result you can see how one giant map holds all the sub maps together and it's really cool depending on which sub map you're on all the other maps will mimic that color palette and as a result I saw something that we're not supposed to see see the special sub map normally has a pitch black background but as a result of copying the color palette from Yoshi's Island we can see that this pitch black background is in fact a regular ground texture that was just made to look pitch black All right, let's start talking about doors because it gets really interesting here. As you're going to see with this building, as we move up, the castle walls seem to immediately end. But what's really interesting is that up here, there's another door. Or should I say it's the same door as before. See, the way that Super Mario World works is that sometimes there will be two screens and sometimes there will be one screen. And if you expand something to two screens, things start to just repeat itself. And so this door is just a repeat of the door that we were just at. The exit boo doors follows a completely different set of rules, though. As you start to move up, the doors just kind of come 
come with you. And also by removing the layers here, you can see what that building would look like without the doors open or the exit sign. And if you thought it was fun seeing what the top of the buildings look like, I also want to show you what some of the stages look like in the Forest of Illusion when you just move right past that bottom screen. And just like anything else, the tree line immediately stops. It, I don't know what to tell you. It just, it gives me such a trip to see this stuff. And here's one more example of everything we just talked about with the bonus room. Again, the border just immediately stops and also the item blocks start to come back onto the second screen. Okay, how about we start looking at stuff that is actually outside of the boundaries that you're not supposed to see, but is not an example of saving resources. Well, to start with, on the Resnor boss stage, if we go below the lava line, you can see that there's a stone brick line. That's pretty much used in all the boss battle rooms for the Koopalings. And so it might be doing the same effect that we saw earlier where screens repeat itself when you start to move up or down. And so the bricks in the Resnor area might be rested above, just out of bounds. <laughs> And then we have an enemy that is completely unused and would be never seen by the player by normal means. In the stage that can lead you to the green switch, if you were able to get rid of the auto scrolling and move Mario all the way to the right, for a brief moment you would see a buzzy beetle trapped in the wall who then falls through the environment and is never to be seen again. What he's doing there? I'm not sure. I guess the developers knew that he was never going to be seen by the player anyway, or maybe it was just an oversight by the developers in general. But either way, it never affects the gameplay. Now right, let's talk about a couple things hidden by layers. Now you might remember these pipes here that move up and down, it's kind of interesting how they pull this effect off because the lip of the pipe is the only thing that's really panning up and down. If you remove that layer of the pipe, you're gonna see that how it extends is that it ends up putting in chunks of the pipe underneath, making it look a lot more jerky if you remove the lip. And then we got the Blarg. Now this guy's really cool. He kind of peeks out of the lava really quick and then when he sees that the coast is clear, he tries to attack Mario. Removing the layer of the lava though can show you that the eyes are not connected to anything at all. It's instead completely separated and that the Blarg monster doesn't really have too much going on underneath the lava. Though if you compare the original version with the unhidden version, you can see there's a lot more pixels to the monster that's not normally seen. And then we got the Piranha Plants. These guys are always so interesting to talk about on Boundary Break for some reason. And in Super Mario World, if you keep away from the pipe, the Piranha Plants keep going back and forth and there's no interruption whatsoever. But that classic Mario move, if you're right next to the pipe, you might remember that the Piranha Plant doesn't attack Mario. And when that happens, the image of the Piranha Plant is removed entirely. Meanwhile, these variants over here have a different property. When they go inside the pipe, their animation is completely frozen until they come back out of the pipe. And then there's Lemmy Koopa who goes in and out of pipes. Now, again, there isn't too much to see outside of the fact that he has no torso underneath, except for the fact that every single time he switches to a different pipe, there is a single frame where you can see his entire body. All right, now let's move on to a mixed bag of weird oddities. Now, people who've done Mario Maker before probably are very familiar with this, but it's not entirely common in Super Mario World. Here's an example of a stage where you go into a sub area within the stage and this is that sub area that you would normally go to. Now when you go outside the other pipe in the sub area, it takes you to this opposite side in the main stage. But if you were to move Mario through the main stage and just skip the sub area entirely, you can see that after a little bit of distance here, you would find the pipe that you would normally come out of, showing that this entire main stage is completely connected together. Also this is something that you don't get to see typically. If you throw an enemy in the lava, there's a lava effect and if Mario touches the lava in a normal game, Mario simply dies immediately. But there is a water property to the lava. If you were fully invincible and you were to dip yourself in the lava like here, you can see the water effect indicating that Mario could have been able to swim in lava at one point. And here's some various weird stuff of all the fortress animations. Nearly all the fortresses have a separate layer for the door and underneath that layer is a gray version of the door. And despite the fact that it's only shown for one scene, every single fortress has a sprite for the dug up dirt underneath. Also, if you were able to take control of Mario during these scenes, a lot of the stuff in these scenes obey the laws of gameplay. Like for example, if you don't move the egg over into the spot, it never triggers the scene where it says thank you. But even better than that, I want to show you this scene right here where every time you push the button, it makes the noise as if you've activated the button. Here, take a listen. All right, we're almost at the finish line here, so let's talk about a couple of more things before we move on to Bowser. The giant wooden beams. If you take a look at them from the very back end of them, you can see that for a couple of frames, the status box shows up right at the tail end of the beam. I asked Lux why this would be the case, and he said it was because they're both on the same layer in the game. The wooden beam ends up using some vertical scrolling, and as a result of scrolling too far down, it ends up showing some of the status bar. And inside the Chaco Ghost House, there seems to be a beam here. It has collision, and for some weird reason, it doesn't have 
correct sprites. So you get this glitchy mess to represent it. Anyways, moving on to Bowser's castle. I'm gonna show you two things. One is here's Bowser flying around his castle. I know you can see that when the lightning flashes, but this is just a nice easier way to see him in full and just soak it in for a bit. Also, there's a separate layer for the Bowser sign for some reason, which likely indicates that that Bowser sign didn't exist there to start with and it was added in post. You can also see this for yourself if you were to complete a stage, but I just wanted to take a moment to kind of illustrate the fact that it's weird that they let this in, especially when it accidentally gets removed whenever a save screen pops up. And then there's the face off of Bowser himself. Now Bowser is attached to his clown copter, so removing layers isn't going to show you anything too interesting there, but Princess Peach is not. Now you may remember this scene where Peach is looking absolutely hideous and throws Mario a mushroom. Well, if you remove the layer during this scene, you can see that the clown copter is on a separate layer. And you can see a little bit more of her white belt that surrounds the torso. And lastly, after you rescue Princess Peach, there's a fun little tidbit here. Princess Peach will walk to you indefinitely until she reaches you. So normally, Mario walks to her and the gap is bridged pretty quickly. But in this episode, we're going to make her walk to us. And also, Mario's blush is on a separate layer. So if we move Mario through Princess Peach, you can put Mario's face on Princess Peach's body. Fun little fact.